This version of Christian discipleship, of Christian living, is a harder version that requires more commitment on our part. And we need to model that for our kids. Raise the bar. Require more of yourself. And then what are we doing? We have to arm ourselves with truth. What are you going to do with that time? You're going to spend it studying truth. You know, police officers, we get deployed, and they give us equipment, right? They don't just send us out there, you know, barefoot. They send us out there with stuff that they have given us so we can do our job. And not only have they given us stuff, they've trained us so that we can properly use the stuff they've given us. Now, we're going to deploy students into the colleges. And my question, of course, is, are we actually giving them any stuff? Are we equipping them? Are we arming them? This is what we talk about when we talk about inoculation theory. You know, an inoculation is that little bit of the flu that you get, right? Then your body learns how to fight off that little bit of the flu. When the big flu comes and it comes your way, your body's already fought it off. Your body's already got an antibody for that. It doesn't, it's not affected by it. What we want to do is to give the information that the culture thinks is true, which we know is false, to our students in appropriate doses, in the appropriate context, so that when they finally hear that lie down the road, they've already been there, done that. I want my students to hear every bad idea from me, not from some professor in their f- freshman year. They're going to hear it from me first. So I would require, as required reading, books that are, have the opposite worldview. These are the very books that I used with my students. I want to inoculate them. I want them to go through these ideas with me before they get to these ideas in the culture. And of course, we can't stop there. We have to give them the truth of God's word. And of course, I don't even stop there. I want to supplement that with the writing of people who are are actually clear thinkers. Now, this is several years ago when I started doing this. I have got a whole new selection of books I would probably use today. But these were the books that I use with my students. I wish I had the best books that are out there, which, of course, are these three books. What are you going to (laughs) do? Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because in the end, I think that arming students is key to making the difference, which is why we do this at Summit. There is no group, no organization, no ministry on the planet that does this better than Summit. I'm not just pitching that because I work with Summit. It's just true. Now, I will tell you that I got a letter recently from a guy who's a pastor's son. His name is Andrew Dean. Here's what he said to me. I thought it was provocative. He said, you know, my dad was a Southern Baptist preacher. And while I was growing up, basically, I lived at the church. I knew all the Bible stories, even baptized when I was eight. After graduating high school, I went to college to get a degree in mechanical engineering. One might think a degree of this kind would involve little or no discussion of whether or not God exists. Or if Jesus was a real person, but I encountered these and many more objections. I had a literature class where the professor gave a presentation on how Jesus was copied from other gods and how this explained why the mythology of Jesus. I had an electromagnetics course in which the professor viciously attacked the concept of intelligent design. I had a space technology class in which the professor vehemently argued for the existence of aliens, but he refused to acknowledge the existence of of God. There are, these are just a few of the examples from the many interactions I have with my professors. Unfortunately, most of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ are severely lacking in training. And when they encounter even the weakest arguments, they're not prepared. As a Christian in the college setting, you're being constantly challenged, constantly poked and prodded. It's easy to throw your hands up in the air, becoming convinced by your, uh, that your faith is a lie when you're being trampled every day by both professors and by peers. All Christians, but especially ones in college, must know what they believe and why they believe if they have any hope of surviving with their faith intact. I think of college almost like an atheist ambush. The Christians are walking in totally unaware of the danger until it's too late and the damage has already been done. They could easily say this about Summit. That's why I wanted to take the time to thank you. When I entered college, I was struggling with many of the objections I encountered. I discovered your podcast, your careful research. The evidential approach was incredibly helpful. As a result, I've actually exited college with my faith even stronger than when I began. I want to encourage you to keep up the good work. That's what Summit does with students so they will be ready. We're not going to try to have any luck as parents putting a shield around our kids because if we do that while they're with us, yeah, we can protect them from bad ideas. But then when they go away from us in the university setting, they are completely unprotected. Instead, we are going to inoculate our students while they are with us so then when they go out into that setting, they're bulletproof. That's what we're doing. 
That being said, I want to ask you, what are you reading right now? This applies to you too. What are you doing right now to become bulletproof? Again, think of the last five things you've read. 